Well, hello there, and welcome back to Exworthy Junction. My railway is open again, after the blockade to upgrade the point work at the country end of the station, and replace the insulated frog turnouts with switched electro frog ones. I also made some changes to the layout, the first of these being the use of a Y point to access the goods yard. This allowed me to ease the curves into the goods yard, particularly those into the shed road. This then allowed me to move the crossover to the other side of the bay connection, closer to the level crossing. This is better for running longer trains in the down direction. Instead of having to install the starter signal, once I've built it, about where the water column is, I can move it ahead of the platform. I also get a decent length of head shunt out of the deal. It looks much better now when used for shunting or for storing a light engine. Now, here are some pictures taken during the reconstruction. You can see that many of the structures have been removed for safekeeping. I've also reinforced the platform fencing with a strip of wood and masking tape. I feel if I hadn't done this I would have flattened it in several areas by now. Under the paper towels I'm soaking the track work in an isopropanol water mixture to soften the ballast glue and let me lift the track. I decided to use a flexible PVA glue to level out a lot of the irregularities in the baseboard, but this did not work out well. Each turnout was modified to give good DCC performance. The stock rails were bonded to the closure rails. Gaps were cut in each closure rail and filled with epoxy putty to isolate the frog and a wire soldered to the frog connections to allow the frog to be powered. Of course, in the future, when Pico make these turnouts using their unifrog construction, we won't have to do all this. Turnouts are controlled by the wire in tube method from Caboose Industries ground throws, which have the little contacts on them. These connect the yellow frog wire to either the blue or green bus wire as appropriate. Thanks to the way that I made this original baseboard, my wiring needs to be set into the top surface. This is usually done by the cut and cover method. But when there is already scenery in place, I need to resort to tunnelling, either through the scenery or the fibreboard itself. This is my TBM, or tunnel boring machine, a length of brass tube sharpened at the end in the chuck of my electric drill. So now when the down goods arrives to drop off a cattle wagon at the cattle dock, Hello, what's this? A drone shot. What's going on here? Aha, I see. While the tracks were up, I took the opportunity to install a couple more of my homemade uncouplers. Here the pole pieces are activated by an electromagnet, made by wrapping magnet wire around a quarter inch steel rod core. These are buried in a slot cut through the baseboard between the rails. 
the one in the down line will mainly be used for dividing passenger trains. They will eventually be disguised as foot crossings. So now the front part of the train can draw forward over the crossover. The train then sets back slowly and smoothly into the goods yard. and having dropped off its wagon, comes forward again, smoothly and slowly. Ooh, maybe just a fractional hesitation there. Perhaps a little bit of fettling of the track or engine is required. So, soon the train can depart for the next station down the line. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope you'll come and visit Exworthy again soon by which time I should have checked out all the track and ballasted it, and maybe even added the signals. <laughs>